Blessed day, friends. Mary, we meet. Today we're going to be making an altruism for magical inspiration. My name is Brooks with Sacredissium. Let's go ahead and get started. This page was provided in our monthly subscription box for the Sacred Sabbath for the month of July 2021. This is a printed page for your Book of Shadows. It goes over step by step of the entire process on how to create this altruism. However, I will be going through each of these steps throughout the length of this video. So if you did not subscribe to our box and you don't have this page, perfectly fine. You'll still be able to follow along. And if you don't have this page, you can just pause the video if you want to take a look at it and give it a read. Let's take a look at some of the items that we're going to need in order to complete this besom. Some of these items aren't necessary. They just add to the magic of adding creativity to the besom. So this is dried prairie grass. Then we have a bundle of wheat head. We're only gonna use one of them, so you don't need a whole bunch and really you don't need it at all. This is a bag of calendula flowers. We're gonna use very minimal of this as well. So even if you just have a pinch of it or you can find another herb that is associated with creativity that you want to use. This is a kit that was included in our subscription box that includes some additional items that are more on the decorative side, such as ribbon and twine and beads. A bowl of sea salt. Some crazy glue. This is the craft version. I like to use this kind because it comes with a brush. It just makes applying it a lot easier, cleaner, so you don't want to glue your fingers together. This is what we're pretty much going to be creating. This is the altruism. You can keep it small or if you want to go large, you can go big and make a full-size besom. But for this video and for the purpose of what we're doing is for the altar. This is the Harvest Inspiration Oil that was included in our monthly subscription box. The oil is not necessary and it was not part of the actual creation of the altar besom, but I am going to use it in my creation for just adding a little bit of extra boost of magic. This candle was included in the monthly subscription box as well, already dressed. You don't need this candle. You don't need any candle at all. Um, I have this candle going because while I'm creating the besom, I'm just adding to the additional magic being involved in this candle. Being orange is associated with creativity and inspiration. It's also dressed with herbs and oils for creativity and inspiration. You will need a pair of scissors. There's going to be some cutting, not much. Decorative ribbon if you want it. So at the end you can have a more finished look. Some natural twine, jute, um, also metals. So this is a metal copper wire. I would recommend copper. Copper is conductive with energy and just helps the magic flow more freely. We also have a little glass charm jar. So really you can use any jar. You don't even have to use a jar at all. You can use a little pouch or anything that you can pretty much put herbs in to have it hanging onto the besom. And again, it's not even necessary at all. It's just a, another way of boosting the magic of the actual besom itself. And then what I showed you in the bag was just a bunch of little glass beads that are gold in association with the theme of the besom. The calendula flower is not on the BOS page and it was not part of the construction of the besom. I grow calendula so I just wanted to add a piece of the dried calendula to my personal besom just to make it a little bit more personalized. Here I'm showing you how the bundle of dried prairie grass is on the longer side. So I'm just cutting it in half so that way it creates a thicker sweep 
and it also puts them into a more proportionate size. It's a little bit of a messy process. They literally go everywhere. So after you cut it, you're gonna have to level them all back out. I'm pretty much just bundling up the pieces and then I'm going to be going through the bundle trying to find the thicker pieces of the prairie grass. Some of them are really firm to the point that you can barely bend them. Those are the pieces that I want to pull out because those would make a great firm handle. So I picked out a, a decent amount. Um, I believe it was probably around like five to six pieces for the handle. And that's what I'm gonna work with first. So we're just setting the other pieces aside and we're gonna level out the pieces that I pulled out for the handle. These pieces are going to be used for the handle. So go ahead and put them into a bundle and we're going to tie off both ends. I'm going to use a piece of jute twine to tie it off. You can really use anything you want. I don't do it here in the video, but if you find it easier, you can use rubber bands as a temporary hold so that way they're not falling everywhere while you're trying to tie the ends off. Probably would make things a lot easier. I've just done this so many times that it's pretty easy for myself, but I will tell you the first few times that I made these, it was a somewhat of a disaster and was a little bit on the frustrating side. I kept dropping them, I had pieces going everywhere, I wish I had four more hands. So I would probably recommend bundling them up with a rubber band, tying off the ends and then cutting the rubber bands off. So I tied one end, cut off the excess, tying off the other end. And then I am going to use the crazy glue anywhere that I tie so that way I can make sure that this is long lasting. My knots aren't gonna come undone. If you notice after I was done tying, I did push the ties closer to the ends of the bundle, but I didn't wanna go all the way to the edge. So I left a good about a half inch on both sides from the edge. Now I'm gathering up the remaining cuts of the prairie grass. This is going to be used for the sweep. So I'm kind of fanning them out in my hand because ideally you want to have the handle surrounded by the sweep. So the handle is going to be in the middle. So after you lay them out in your hand, you can put the handle in and kind of wrap it around. Again, here would be another great place for a rubber band to secure while you're tying. Even in this moment, I was having a little bit of issues with them staying in place while I was trying to film, show what, what I'm doing and getting it tied up. So if you find that you're having a little bit of a problem or issues, just take a breath, relax, try again. There's no rush, take your time. It can be somewhat challenging. So just keep that in mind. It's not you, it's everyone. Here I'm tying off the sweep to the handle using the copper wire. So I centered the copper wire and then wrapped it around and just twisted it tight. The more you twist the wire, the tighter it gets. Once I had it tight and it felt really secure to where the sweep was not gonna fall apart, I went ahead and straightened out the other ends because we're going to be putting beads on it. The beads are not necessary, but they do definitely dress it up. And I'm a strong believer in color magic. So the more additional steps where I can be adding more additional magical boost to one of my magical crafts or spells, I'm going to do it, but it's not necessary. So don't think that you have to do this part. This is yet another time consuming, tedious part. And when you have 
thick fingers like me, it was somewhat of annoying as well, trying to find the hole each and every time. Just take your time, get it done, or just skip this process altogether. I'm sure you don't want to watch me do it, so I'm going to speed it up. So after I got all the beads on, I'm checking it to make sure that it's going to go all the way around. Here I added too much. I'm going to remove a couple of the beads and then just set this aside because we need to get the charm jar put together so we can put it onto the copper wire before we twist it off and complete it. So here we're using a charm jar. You can use a little piece of cloth and create a charm bag. You can use loose items. Anything that adds representational magic to your spell or that is associated with inspiration and creativity. We're going to be starting off with the calendula. Again, it's not going to take much. The jar that we're using is really tiny, so just a pinch is enough for here. I am going to add a pinch of the sea salt. And once I add the sea salt, just gonna do a quick little blend into my hand and go ahead and charge it with my intent. Again, this particular besom is intended for magical inspiration and bringing creativity. So if you're designing your besom for a different purpose, then just make sure that your intent serves that purpose. But here I am charging my ingredients with the intention and the magical purpose of magical inspiration. You can take as long as you need to do this. Just visualize the energy of your intent flowing into the ingredients. I'm going to use a little stick from a piece of the cutting of the prairie grass to help shove the pieces of calendula into the jar. Sometimes you just got to look around and be creative. So it is a tiny jar, but it did take a few minutes to get all the pieces in. And I just kind of alternated back and forth, so a little pinch of the calendula, a little pinch of the salt, a little pinch of calendula. And here I'm going to be adding some of the Harvest Inspiration oil that came in the monthly subscription box. Again, the oil is not part of the process listed out on the Book of Shadows page, and it is not a required step, but if you do have an oil that has a magical correspondence with inspiration, definitely use that. Or don't use oil at all. Again, it was not part of the process. I was just feeling intuitively guided to add the oil. So that's why I'm just adding in a few drops. Here I'm just drying off the jar just to make sure that there was no oil touching the inside of the jar because I am going to super glue the cork on just to make sure that that jar stays secured never opens or falls off of my besom. So I'm adding the glue only to the bottom half of the cork. I don't want it to go all the way to the top. The cork's not going to shut all the way closed anyhow. And then I'm going to push it on pretty tightly. So there we have it. This is pretty much our little spell jar. Again, it's not required to have a spell jar on your besom, but I do find it to be a very potent and somewhat important part of this particular besom. So here I'm just going to show you how we're going to attach the jar. You don't want to put the wire in through the same side of the loop. So I'm going to show you an example of what that looks like if you were to go through the same side. If you go through the same side, it's gonna end up getting loose. You want to make sure that one wire goes through one side of the loop and the other wire goes through the other. That way when you do pull it tight, it will allow your jar to hang a little bit more freely and also allow you to get a tighter twist with the copper wire to make sure that your besom is fully tight and secure. 
So once we have the jar twisted on, here we go again with the beads. So we're gonna take the copper wire around to the back side of the besom. And before we do that, we're just adding more beads as we go along. And again, if you're not using beads, perfectly fine. They are not necessary. It's just adds a little bit of dress up and color magic to the spell. So when I got to the back, the copper wire was on the shorter side. So I just grabbed a pair of pliers to grab both ends of the wire and start twisting. I would recommend doing this part with pliers regardless of how much length of copper wire you have left. This is really going to be the final twist that's going to secure the entire project together. It does leave a little bit of an end if you have a lot of excess, of course, cut it off. Copper wire tends to cut fairly easy with scissors. After I twisted it off, I just folded the twist upwards. That way it's not sticking out and then I do plan to cover it up with some ribbon. Um, if you're not using the ribbon I would maybe push it a little bit further so that way it's sticking into the top of the sweep just so that way you're not poking yourself or getting snagged on it. Um, but I am going to be covering that with ribbon later. So now I'm going to be adding in my additional decorative pieces. They are decorative, but at the same time, they do serve a purpose. Wheat is great for growth and creativity, so that's why I'm using it in this besom. I'm going through here, even though I have four of them, I'm trying to find which wheat head is appropriate size for the, my sweep. I don't want the grains hanging all the way down to the end. If the tips of the wheat extend past the sweep, that's perfectly fine because it's all going to be trimmed off at the end. But I don't want the actual grain pieces sticking out past the end of the sweep. So I found a piece that was suitable. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to feed it up into the besom. It will be very difficult to just squeeze it underneath the copper wire. So you're going to actually need to kind of stick it inside of the sweep. That way it's sliding up in between the other dried prairie grass instead of trying just to push it underneath the copper wire. Once I get it all the way in place, I'm not going to cut the top off and I will show you how we'll finish that off later on. But now I'm going to add my piece of calendula. Just a reminder, the calendula was not part of the original project. It is not on the printed BOS page that came in the subscription box and it is not a necessary or required step for this besom. Again, this is just my own personal touch and if you would like to add your own personal touches as well, I highly recommend it. So I got my piece of calendula in there and I am going to go ahead and snip off the excess calendula. That part is not needed, but I am not going to cut the excess wheat. So here I'm showing you what we do with the excess wheat. You could snip it off if you want to, but I kind of like the contrast of the light on the dart. So I like to just wrap it around the entire handle, which also in a way kind of adds an additional security to the bundle. And it just really kind of looks neat. So I'm just going to wrap it around to the top and then I'm going to tuck it underneath the top piece of twine that I use to secure the handle. There's a little bit of excess jute, jute twine there so I'm going to go ahead and snip that off. And then I'm going to super glue where the wheat is tucked in under because I don't want that to come out. I'm also going to super glue the top of where the calendula comes out. Just to make sure that it doesn't slide out and it stays there long term. And remember where the calendula is sticking out, that's going to be covered up with the orange ribbon on mine because I'm going to be using it as a decorative piece but again you don't have to add ribbon if you don't have it or if you don't want to use it. 
Before we move on to the ribbon, we're just snipping off the bottom. I would say cut slowly and evenly along this. This is going to give you a nice clean cut on the bottom of your sweep. If you want to keep a jaggedy, ragged, rustic look, you don't have to do this part. I just kind of like the way it looks better when it's cut. And it also tends to stand a little bit better when you're leaning it in places or however you're planning to store your resin. Now we're going to be adding the orange ribbon. So with the kit, if you received our monthly subscription box, you would have had a piece of orange ribbon inside of your kit. I would recommend also using the orange ribbon that was used to tie up your dried prairie grass in shipping. That way you have two pieces of ribbon and you can use one down on the sweep and one on the handle. Again, you can be creative and do your own thing. You can just put it down on the sweep and not do anything with the handle. You can put it on both like I do or not do it at all. It's completely up to you. This is yours, make it yours. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting down on the sweep and I'm just making sure that the front of the ribbon is on the front of the bezel and that I'm cutting it with enough left over to where the ribbon can overlap because I am going to super glue it on. I added a, a dab of super glue to the front of the bezel before I put the ribbon on. Then I wrap the ribbon around, cut off the excess, and then I'm going to be super gluing that down. This is one of those times where you kind of want an extra hand to cut while you're holding it in place, but I may do. So I'm showing you here the copper wire that I pushed up because I definitely want to make sure that that's covered. So I'm adding some super glue directly onto the dried prairie grass and then I'm going to hold one side of the ribbon onto that with the scissors just so I don't glue myself, my fingers, to the besom. It dries quickly so once it's dried then I'm going to add a little more super glue on top of that piece of ribbon and now I'll finalize and secure the piece of ribbon around the base. So you could stop here. This, is, this looks great already. You don't have to do the top. But I do want to add a piece of ribbon to the top of the handle just to go over the jute twine. It can go either way. I do love the look of the jute twine. It just has this rustic, old world witchy look. But I'm also a Taurus by nature and I like things to look complete. So I went against my gut in this situation and went ahead and followed my nature and covered it up with ribbon. On the top piece of ribbon on the handle, the only thing that I did different was I actually tied it on with a knot and then glued the knot just because the handle is going to be touched and, and used a lot more than where the ribbon is on the sweep. So I want to make sure that it's going to stay and not end up falling apart in the future. So, and there you have it. That is the completed altar besom. Once you have it completed, it's not a necessary step, but with everything that I do in magic, I charge it magically along the way with my ingredients. 
And then once I do have a finalized product, I like to magically charge that as well. So what I'm doing right now is just magically charging it again with the finalized intent for this spell, which is for magical inspiration and creativity. So when I'm using this besom, I can sweep my altar, I can sweep my magical tools, I can sweep my pen, pencil, my computer, myself, anywhere that I want to add a boost of inspiration, boost of creativity. Before my meditations, I can do a sweep over myself. I can use it as a fan for when I'm smudging my space. Again, putting out that energy. If you liked making this project with me, definitely like, subscribe, share, and be sure to hit that notification bell. I will be putting out many more videos on tutorials about witchcraft, different spells, dressing candles, making charms, also following along with our monthly subscription boxes. Um, so if you're receiving our monthly subscription boxes, I'm going to show you how to do the spells in those. If you are interested in our monthly subscription boxes, you can visit my website at www.sacredcm.com. And I just thank you again for joining me today. Merry we meet, merry we part, blessed be.